Hello, what's up guys? Eman from Peso Smart PH here. Welcome sa pinang bagong episode. Shoutout din sa mga podcast listeners natin. I appreciate you all. Today, magsa-stock review tayo. Yung i-discuss natin is si JFC, Jollibee Foods Corporation. So, let's get started. And of course, bago ang lahat, uh, nakahit na natin yung 800 subscribers. So, thank you everyone sa mga nag-subscribe. And sa mga sumusubay, ibay sa mga videos ko. Yeah, I appreciate you all. Thank you very much talaga. Okay, so start tayo with the background of Jollibee Foods Corporation. Paano nga ba siya nagsimula? So, noong 1975, yung founder niya na si Tony Tan Kak Tiong and his family opened a Magnolia Ice Cream Parlor in Cubao, Quezon City, which is credited as the first Jollibee outlet. So, hindi talaga siya nagsimula as a fast food uh, restaurant. So, ice cream parlor siya nung una. And then, the Magdolia outlets operated by the Tan Kak Tiong clan began offering hot meals and sandwiches upon request from the customers which the family found out to be more popular than the franchise's ice cream. So, doon nagsimula. Kung baga yung uh, pagiging fast, po- fast food nila, yung pagsaserve nila ng mga uh, ganitong meal, di ba? mga sandwiches and naging burger na eventually. And then, yung hot meals sila naging uh, yung chicken joy, yung mga ganon, mga spaghetti. And then Jollibee Foods Corporation, JFC, was incorporated back in January 11, 1978. So after three years, nung nag-open sila ng unang store, which was a Magnolia Ice Cream Parlor. And then Jollibee experienced rapid growth. It was able to withstand the entry of McDonald's in the Philippines in 1981 by focusing on the specific tastes of the Filipino market, which differed from the American fast food company. So, di ba yung spaghetti ni Jollibee is like sweet and hindi ganun ka-alat. And yeah, parang hindi siya masyado like Italian-ish type of spaghetti. And di ba, yung sa McDonald's naman, I think uh, they made it a bit sweeter na rin. Parang uh, medyo tumama sa palette ng mga Filipinos but it's still not uh, jolly spaghetti. <laughs> Iba pa rin siya. And yung, ano rin, yung, uh, yung chicken nila, di ba? I think, well, on, in my opinion, yung best uh, fast food fried chicken is uh, Chicken Joy from Jollibee. I think, uh, wala pa ako titikman na, like, like, better. I think siguro close is yung, uh, tawag dito, yung Popeyes. Um, masarap talaga yung fried chicken nila, but it's, it's different. Eh. It's a different taste. So, back in July 13, 1993, JFC was listed at the Philippine Stock Exchange. So, doon na nagsimula. Uh, malist yung company na to. And, ayun, uh, swerte yung mga naunang bumili ng stocks ni Jollibee kasi grabe, sobrang mura lang niya nag-IPO uh, back then. And, syempre, hindi pa naman ako buhay noong 1993. 1995 ako pinanganak. Uh, and, at the end of 2019, meron ng 1,195 Jollibee stores nationwide, of which 680 were franchised and 515 were company-owned. Okay, so, on international operations, Jollibee have 266 stores. So, 39 stores in the US, 9 in Canada, one in Guam, Italy, Malaysia, Macau, and the United Kingdom. 130 in Vietnam. 18 in Brunei. 10 in Hong Kong. 9 in Singapore. 46 in the Middle East. So, medyo madami sa Vietnam, no? Gustong gusto talaga nila yung Jollibee uh, sa country na yun. And then, ito naman yung mga businesses ni Jollibee Foods Corporation. Bukod sa Jollibee, meron silang ibang uh, mga chains, like katulad doon mga insal, diba yun yung mga alam natin, and Greenwich. I think Greenwich yung mas una nilang na-acquire, I think back in the 80s pa. And the company's principal business in the development, operation, and franchising of quick service restaurants under the trade names, over 4,500 stores in 21 countries. So, sobrang dami yan. So, Jollibee and Dunkin' Donuts and papala, isa pa yun sa kilala na chain dito sa Philippines. Chow King and Smash Burger, Greenwich and Team Ho Wan, Red Ribbon, Torotas Frontera. Ito hindi ko pa natatry ever, I think. Ito rin yung Yo He King, hindi ko alam yan. And uh, ito medyo familiar tayo dito, The Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. 
Hong Zhuang Yuan, di ko alam to panda express yan. Di ko parehong ta try but I'm familiar with it. Mang Enesal and Hard Rock Cafe, Burger King and Fo 24 yon di ko parehong ta try. And lastly Highlands Coffee. The other activities of JFC include manufacturing and property leasing in support of the QSR systems and other business activities. So, ayun, di ba? Uh, siyempre, pag ka nag, kunyari, nag-franchise ka ng isang, for example, Jollibee, kailangan mo siyempre ng pwesto, di ba? So, uh, kalimitan ay nag... Siyempre, nagbang-market research yan saan ba merong uh, maraming traffic, saan ba maganda i-place yung store. So, ayan, nakasama yan sa lahat ng kailangan mo i-research pagka magpo-franchise ka. And, siyempre, uh, in Jollibee, meron silang may mga parang building silang in-own. And usually, dun, uh, yun yung nirelease ng mga franchises. And kung mapapansin nyo, uh, karamihan dun sa mga, for example, sa mga building na yun is like magkakatabi yung mga Inasal, Greenwich, Jollibee. So, ayun. Okay, so moving on naman tayo to the leadership. So, yung chairman niya is yung founder din niya na si Tony Tan Kaktiong. So, currently, 67 years old. Bata pa siya, no? Kasi medyo ano naman eh. Like, hindi naman recently, but parang ang bilis nga nung pag-boom ng business itong si Jollibee. So, 1978 lang siya uh, na-establish. So, hindi pa nga siya ganun katandaan. <laughs> so, around uh, 42 years ago kasi uh, nagsimula yung JFC talaga. I mean, na-incorporate. So, yeah. He's also the co-chairman of Double Dragon Properties. So, he was born to a Chinese immigrant parents from Fujian, and he was born in Davao del Sur. He graduated from the University of Santo Tomas or UST with a degree in chemical engineering. So, medyo malayo, no? Yung parang tinahak ng career niya. But, aguro naman talaga. Kasi sometimes, hindi naman, lalo na dati, hindi naman ikaw yung pumipili ng course na ititake mo. So, siguro, uh, pinagbigyan lang niya yung parents niya or kung ano may reason. And then eventually, yun, gusto niya talaga niya mag-business and yeah, it was successful naman. It was the right choice. And yung current net worth niya is around 2.3 billion US dollars. Nasa 111.51 billion pesos yan kapag kakinonvert. And then, leadership pa rin tayo. Director and CEO naman yung uh, sisilipin natin. So, si Ernesto Tan Mantiong, yung uh, CEO and director ni Jollibee. So, he's currently 62 years old. Mas bata lang siya ng 5 years kay Tony. He's the chairman of the board of trustees of the Atenea de Manila University and is a member of the Jollibee Group Foundation Board of Trustees. And he finished uh, a BS degree in business management from the Atenea de Manila University. And then, back in 2000 and 2013, he completed two programs at the Harvard Business School. Alright, so dito na tayo sa numbers. Start tayo sa stock data. So currently, yung last traded price niya back in Friday, uh, that was yesterday, is 170 pesos per share. Yung open niya, 171.60. High niya is 171.60 din. And then yung lowest na nakuha is 168. So yung naging average price niya yesterday was 169.46 pesos per share. Yung 52-week high niya is nasa 235 pesos per share. Last year pa to na kuha around uh, November-ish, October. 52-week low niya is 91.10. So, nakuha yan. Sisilipin natin uh, sa, next, uh, sa next picture, sa next image, uh, which was back in March 19, which was yung time na nag-crash yung market. And karamihan sa mga stocks is talagang bumagsak. So, yung market capitalization niya is nasa 191 billion pesos. Outstanding shares nasa 1.1 billion. And listed shares, 1.1 billion din. So, move on tayo dun sa graph. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Uh, March 19, nag-crash yung market. So, yung lowest na nakuha niya is 91.10. Uh, at some point kasi, umabot sa 4,000 na lang <laughs> yung PSEI. Uh, on that day. Nakarecover naman siya uh, kahit papano like the next few days or the next few weeks. However, talaga nung araw na yun, nag-close nga rin siya at 91.10. No? 
yung highs niya 106.20 so talagang rough yung araw na yun para sa stock na to and sa karamihan naman mga stock sa PSE and then we're now looking at the current price uh, ito yung nakuha niya yung highs niya in like uh, say 6-7 months so highest was 179 pesos per share uh, yung close niya is 179 then that was back in October 23, like a week ago. And then the lowest was 171.90. And then ito naman yung graph, uh, price history niya. So looking back in 2010, January 4, weekend in January 4, uh, yung highest niya was 59.50, lowest was 55. So dyan nag-start like tumaas yung stock prices ni JFC. The next one we're looking at 2013, August week of August 12. So, na hit na niya yung 170 mark. No, highest nga niya is 179.50. And then, lowest was 165.10. Nag close siya at 176. So, ito medyo booming na talaga. Diba? Like, kung bumili ka 3 years ago, 2010, nasa 50 ish pesos lang per share yung uh, GFC stock. And then after 3 years lang, di ba, like, na uh, more than triple na yung pera mo na na-invest. So, di ba, kung isipin mo, nag-invest ka ng 55,000 pesos back in 2010. And then, binenta mo siya, like, in 2013, di ba, like, na triple mo yun, naging 179,000 pesos na yun. Or like, kung nasa low end ka nagbenta, nasa 160-ish thousand pesos. So, hindi na ganun kasama, no? And nagbibigay din naman ng dividend si JFC. So, that's pretty good then. Alright, so, ito naman, 2019 na, after 6 years, na-hit na niya yung pinakamataas na price uh, in the history of its listing, which was 325.20. So, week to ng uh, January 21, 2019. So, last year lang to, no? So, sobrang excited ng market dahil sa bagong taon and yun. After that, uh, gradually naman siyang bumaba, ano? And before nga mag-start yung 2020, medyo nag-normalize yung price niya. Around uh, less than 200 pesos per share. Pero I think may potential pa yun siyang maabot ulit yun. Yung ganong high. Uh, Siyempre ngayong COVID, medyo hindi siya uh, possible. Like in the, uh, in the near future. Pero uh, let's say sabi natin mga 5-10 years. It's it's possible. And yeah, currently yung price nga niya is nasa 170 pesos per share. Hindi na ganun kalayo dun sa like normal-ish price niya. Okay, so move on naman tayo sa dividend information ni JFC. So as I've said, nagbibigay nga siya ng dividends pero hindi talaga ganun kalaki. So kung titingnan mo, no, nasa 170-ish pesos yung uh, price per share niya. Pero yung binigay niya last year is nasa 2.58 pesos per share lang. So, medyo maliit yun. So, yung dividend yield niya last year, 1.19%. Tingnan na yung pinakamalaki in the last 5 years. And yung dividend payout ratio is, hindi uh, naman ganun kasama. No? So, last year, 44% yun. So, kung gagawin mo, like, almost 100%, sabihin natin, doblehin, naging 88% yung dividend payout ratio, hindi pa rin ganun kalaki. May gin, like, 2% lang yung dividend yield niya. So, like, parang ibig sabihin lang nun is medyo bloated yung prices ni uh, JFC. So, yun lang na may explanation nun. Uh, kumikita naman sila in the last 5 years. Pero, yeah, sisilipin natin yun uh, later sa financials nila. And then, ito. ba Consistent naman sila nagbibigyan ng dividends. May mga special pa nga. Pero, that was back in 2013 and 2012 pa. Tapos, ka kalimitan, dalawang bayas sila nagbibigyan ng dividends uh, Historically, since 2016, April and November nangyayari yun. So, kung meron kang GFC stocks, uh, expect mo na na siguro this November we base sila ng dividends. And then, yung dividend yield niya for 2020, currently nasa 0.36% lang. Sobrang liit, no? <laughs> and yung 5-year dividend yield niya, average dividend yield, is nasa 0.90%. So, Talagang hindi ito yung main selling point ng pag-invest dito sa Jollibee, basically. 
uh, mag-invest ka lang sa Jolly BF like so mag-appreciate yung capital mo so yun yung parang main selling point nila and then yung 5 year average dividend payout ratio nila is 36.2% as i've said early hindi naman ganun kababa no uh, but still kung like double mo hindi hindi rin talaga ganun uh, tataas yung dividend yield na binibigay niya kasi medyo uh, bloated nga yung price yung stock prices nitong si Jollibee Alright, so move on naman tayo sa mga price uh, ratios natin for uh, GFC. So, yung price to earnings natin nasa 36.84 last year. And consistent niya na 30 plus since 2016. Noong 2015 nga, naging 47.53 pa. So, yung ideal number dito is 15 and below. So, as I've said earlier, medyo bloated yung uh, stock prices niya. In comparison to the earnings, that is why medyo mababa yung dividend yield ni JFC. So, yun lang yung explanation doon. Uh, mataas yung price na gustong i, uh, ibayad ng mga investors para kumita sila ng at least 1 peso per share. So, yung gusto nilang ibayad for 1 peso uh, na profit sharing uh, for this uh, stock, for this company is 36.84 last year. And then, yung PEG ratio niya, okay naman. 1.65, uh, negative 1.65. So, ibig sabihin lang, like, yung uh, earnings growth niya is, like, uh, sumasang ayon dun sa paglaki or, like, pagtaas ng stock prices niya. So, yung ideal number kasi dyan is 1 and below. So, negative 1.65 siya last year. So, that's pretty good. And then, move on naman tayo sa financials. So, dito, yung net income nila ng 2019, 6.43 billion pesos. So, ganyan naman talaga yung uh, like average uh, net income nila on a yearly basis. Uh, may outlier lang which was uh, noong 2018, 8.21 billion pesos. And noong 2015 naman, medyo baba, 4.93 billion pesos. And yung EBITDA nila, yan, kita nyo naman, ang laki, diba? So, bago sila magbayad ng taxes, ng depreciation, and all that, uh, medyo malaki talaga yung kita. And yung short-term borrowings sila, medyo malaki, along with the long-term borrowings. So, kapag ka tinotal mo yan, uh, nasa 92.08 billion pesos. Noong 2019 lang yun. And then, back in 2018, 66.90 billion Medyo maliit lang nung 2015 to 2017, which was uh, 10 billion, 12 billion, and 16 billion pesos. And ito na, moment of truth. So currently, may pandemic, di ba? So talagang affected yung uh, industry ni Jollibee, which is uh, restaurants and fast food chains. So isa yun sa mga uh, directly na naapektuhan itong si COVID. Uh, as well dun sa... Uh, mga hotels and mga Airbnbs and all that. But, uh, gradually naman silang bumabalik na. No? Kasi, like, nung birthday week ng tatay ko last week, uh, birthday niya was October 21, medyo marami na rin kaming like, napuntahan and nakainan na pwede like, mag-dine in. So, syempre, kailangan nyo lang maging uh, cautious and like, mag-alcohol every time. And syempre, wear masks and uh, your face shields. So yun, uh, safety lang muna syempre. But yeah, uh, balik na nga yung, uh, yung mga restaurants and yung mga fast food chains. And syempre, nag, uh, nag-integrate din naman sila. Like, dati pa naman nag-deliver sila. But, you know, uh, mas parang na-ramp up kasi uh, the past few months nga was not really good uh, for their businesses. And syempre, yung mga ilan din na nagsara na, no? So that's that's not good and yeah I feel I feel bad for them and lalo na yung mga nag-start pa lang diba like 2020 nag start sila like mag-invest mag-franchise and all that and then biglang boom nagka-covid so ayun na halt yung operations and syempre direct hit yun sa potential income nila and sa investment nila Okay so ito uh in thousands to so yung net loss nila for the second quarter of 2020, nasa 10 billion pesos. So, sobrang sakit, no? Kasi kung titingnan nyo, uh, tawa ba? Yes, 10 billion. Kasi 10 million in 1,000. Yeah, tama, tama. In 3 months pa lang yan. Kung titingnan nyo yung naging net income nila noong 2019, is 6.43 billion pesos lang. And yung losses na agad nila, for one quarter, one quarter lang yan, is nasa 10 billion pesos na. So, 
Medyo makati talaga yun. Uh, yung previous year nila, uh, second quarter ng 2019, yung kinita nila is around 888 uh, million pesos. So, hindi rin talaga ganun kalaki no, yung kinikita nila. But yung current uh, year to date naman is nasa 12.5 billion pesos na yung losses. So, medyo all at talaga si JFC uh, currently this year of 2020. Dahil na rin sa COVID. But, <laughs> ito yung good news. Medyo tumataas yung stock price nila. Nakaka-recover na kahit paano. So, currently ito yung uh, holdings ko with JFC. Meron akong 260 shares. Medyo mahal kasi siya. So, konti lang na nabili kong stocks. But yung average cost ko is nasa 124.86 pesos per share. Yung last traded price nga niya is 170 pesos per share. So, yung market value ko nasa 43.8. Uh, K na. And yung total cost ko, 32.4K. So, uh, yung unrealized profit ko, monetary value, 11.3K. Actually, mas matas pa ngayon uh, last week eh. Uh, but medyo, medyo nag-trickle down na yung mga stocks uh, this past week. So, yun. Uh, but still, yung profit ko in percentage is 34.93%. So, yeah. Up siya ng 34.93%. So, medyo malaki yun, no? And kasi kaya ako nakuha tong average cost na to. Actually, nagbumili ako, I think, nasa 160-ish pesos uh, earlier this year ng GFC. I think, konti lang yung binili ko nun. Uh, I believe 60 shares nga lang, nga lang. Kaya ito yung may putal. And then, nakabili ako like ng 200 shares back in, I believe, March or May or April. Uh, around 113 pesos per share lang. So, that's why medyo na pababa ko yung average cost ko uh, for buying this stock. So, yun. Uh, magandang timing lang and yeah, medyo swerte. <laughs> but yeah, uh, kung isipin mo nga, dapat siguro nakabili ako at that time nung nag-91. Kasi actually, nag-watch ako ng market uh, nung araw na yun. Uh, but, ayun nga, yung problema ko is wala akong funds <laughs> directly dun sa BPI trade account ko. Eh, one business day, di ba? Bago siya matransfer kung uh, nag-transfer ka from like your BPI bank account to the settlement account of your uh, BPI trade. So yun, uh, medyo malas lang din. And yeah, hindi ako ready dun sa crash na yun. But yeah, uh, dapat lagi lang tayong siguro uh, sabihin natin like 10%. Meron kang 10% uh, na ready cash <laughs> dun sa settlement account ng, ng, ano mo, ng broker mo. Para lang, if ever, like, may sobrang magmura na stock and, like, pigla may crash, di ba? At least, makabili ka kahit pa paano. So, yun. Uh, lesson learned. Uh, ginagawa ko na yun. At, I mean, I mean, at least I'm trying now uh, to do that. Siyempre, uh, may budget constraints pa rin tayo. So, hindi naman... Like, for example, di ba, yung portfolio around nasa 600-ish K, 500-ish K na. So, parang hirap naman mag, ano lang, maglagay doon ng 60 or 50 K. Uh, na cash na na naka ano lang <laughs> naka tag naka tenga lang di ba like instead of like sabi natin mag invest ka na lang sa uh, SMC 2C di ba like we be ng 7 ish percent na return every year so sign din but yeah uh, siguro ma anticipate mo naman eh pag mag crash di ba kasi yung COVID like uh, it's there na like late 2019 then di naman pinapansin mga government and all that and yeah, parang January, Feb, nag, uh, parang nag-die down na yung, uh, baga, parang quote-unquote hype dun sa, sa COVID or like parang awareness. And then eventually yun nga, boom, nung uh, March, uh, talagang uh, sumabog. <laughs> okay, so mag-wrap up na tayo. <laughs> masyado, na akong, uh, masyado na akong marami sinasabi. So, I think uh, worth it pa rin mag-invest sa JFC, but with its current price, I think uh, okay pa rin mag-invest but I would wait a bit siguro mga 1 or 2 weeks kung uh, mag-stay ba siya sa price ito or like tataas pa lalo kasi I think din naman siya sobrang bababa and lalo na ngayon mag-end ng year uh, usually usually naman medyo mababa yung stock prices at the end of the year but sobrang tataas ulit uh, pa rin starting new year Kasi nga, syempre, uh, parang ano yun, eh, investor or market sentiment. 
and yeah, uh, still, hindi pa rin sila kumikita. So, in my opinion, personally, hindi ako bibili currently ng stocks nila. Kasi hindi kumikita eh. But given na uh, the name and sobrang established na nitong company na to. Grabe yung pagka-establish sa brand name nila, di ba? Jollibee. It's on a different level. It's on a league of its own, di ba? So yeah, uh, nasa sa inyo na rin kung mag-invest kayo. And ito naman na uh, bigay ko sa inyo yung numbers, yung background, yung leadership. Solid naman lahat. Ang red flag lang talaga is yung kanilang uh, current income and yung kanilang uh, mga borrowings. So yun, yung mga utang lang. Alright, so we are heading towards the end of this episode. Silipin natin yung mga sources for today's video. So yun yung CPSC Edge, BPA Trade, and a photo from Unsplash. So lahat ng mga links yan is matatagpuan sa description sa baba. And of course, before we end, we have a quote galing kay Gary Vaynerchuk. So sobrang ganda nito. People lose because they want things fast. When life is long, patience is the fucking game. So yeah, uh, kailangan mo na maging patient talaga sa lahat ng mga bagay. I think nasabi ko na rin to uh, dun sa previous video ko about dun sa recovery ng mga, ng mga stocks ko, sa stock portfolio ko, di ba? Kasi kung like, gusto mo like, ano lang, like fast money, easy money, I think mabilis mo lang din yung magagastos eh. But like if you're patient and uh, kung ipiplay mo yung long game talaga, uh, mas mayiging disciplined ka. Kasi nga, parang pinipigil mo yung sarili mo na yung know, event, <laughs> yung hindi naman dapat event, ah, di ba? Parang, yeah, uh, makukuha mo yung full picture, yung big picture palagi. Yeah, just try to be patient and and try to be more objective sa mga ginagawa nyo. Nothing worth it comes easy and fast. So, kailangan mo talagang uh, mag-work hard. And syempre, work smart na rin. Para dun sa mga bagay na gusto mong gawin and gusto mong achieve. And yeah, be patient lang. So yun guys, end na natin yung episode here. Sana may natutunan kayo and if umabot kayo at the end of this episode, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Huwag nyo kalimutan bigyan tong video ng thumbs up and share nyo na rin if natripa nyo yung content ko. Twice a week ako nag-upload ng mga videos katulad nito. So subscribe ka na and ring the notification bell para wala ka ma-miss out. Again, thanks very much for watching. Stay safe and always remember, be peso smart. Baby, show me. <laughs>